Hi, welcome to At Home with Madeline Lee. Today I'm really excited because I'm going to share with you some beautiful chocolate recipes. And here is Holly, otherwise known as Chocolate Holly, and she is an incredible chocolatier. You are, aren't you? Yes, indeed. Yeah. Actually, you're an artisan chocolatier. Um, I've been eating Holly's chocolate for many years now when I lived in Brighton. And she's come all the way over here to share this with you. So we're going to start by making some salted caramels. And um, the basis for that would be brown sugar and fresh cream. And then we've got a little bit of butter and we're going to boil that up to make our own caramel. So I'm going to pour this into the little pan. So I've got there a cup of cream, in that goes. Mm. The first thing you do when you make caramel is boil the cream. So we're now going to make the caramel. Right. Mm. Use a pan like this, really solid cast iron, something that isn't going to burn the bottom. Okay. Okay. In we put a little bit of syrup. That's from Sweden. That's I found this in your cupboard. Mm -hmm. It's not what I would normally use. I'd probably use you... just... Um, corn syrup, something like that. It's just a tiny bit which helps the caramel along. Some brown sugar. I'm just using little cups to weigh it out. So a cup of brown sugar to start with. Mm. What we want to do is just stir that in a little bit. Do you want to stir that in? Oh, yes, get the salt. Yes, please. And then the salt. Yum, yum, okay. Yum. I love caramel. This is fantastic looking sea salt I found in your pot. Right, yeah, there. you can improvise, can't you? You said earlier. You can use whatever you've got, but use good quality sea salt. Always. Organic then, everything. Or... Yeah, I would say so sure. if you can. Okay. Now we're going to have another cup of sugar, which I've hidden here. Voila! So there we are. So two cups of sugar mm. to one cup of cream mm. and a teaspoon of salt. Oh my God. So we're putting this on a medium to high heat in this very solid pan and just give it a really good stir before you start. Once it starts to melt, you're not meant to stir caramel. Okay, so what's important while this is melting is that you don't over stir it. You just stir it every now and then and the aim, I always use a knife, is to scrape down the little sugar grains that are stuck on the sides. You always get a lot and so you just want to push those into the mixture. Oh my goodness, I'm going to dive in here. It smells absolutely divine. I want to bottle this smell, you know. I want to bottle it and have it in the kitchen all the time. It's wonderful. Some people use a temperature, um, a thermometer, to get the temperature to make their exact caramel. I do it by smell. So what you're saying about the smell is really important. When you smell the caramel burning, it starts to become from a very sweet smell to an almost burny smell. That is when the caramel is actually ready. So you have to take it off. Yeah, well that's when we pour the cream in. Oh okay, right. Okay, so, just... okay. so now the caramel has come to an almost burning point and all the sugar grains have dissolved. That's when you pour in the cream. Stand back. Yum. And then we'll put the butter in. A lovely big wedge of butter goes in. Does it matter how much you use? I just do everything by eye. Me too. You could put in an ounce. And then we'll just give that a really good stir. Oh, God, the smell's getting even better. So once you've added the butter and the cream, that's where the caramel magic really begins. So yeah, careful not to stand over it because it's powerful heat. You can see, it's all melting in now. It smells absolutely gorgeous. It really does. I sometimes, a little trick is if you want a much more intense flavour, I sometimes add a little teaspoon of molasses. Oh, yes. Now this will taste pretty good, I can see that. It's the right colour. You're looking for that deep, dark, mahogany colour. So the next bit is you just reheat it for about five seconds on a medium heat. And at that point, if you want it fairly runny, this is where you add some water. What's important with the caramel is it's incredibly hot. So do not be tempted to put your finger in. I once did that and I really burnt my finger because it smells so good. So let it cool for at least half an hour. You hear that girls? Don't let it lure you in and burn your tongue. Right, now we're gonna go into the chocolate and I've also just had a little taste of the caramel and it's absolutely exquisite. Right, over to you Holly. So we're gonna make some raw chocolate which is um, using cocoa butter and cocoa powder which I've already pre-melted the cocoa butter which is there. So here we've got some cocoa powder for the raw chocolate 
and it's a very different colour to normal cocoa powder, which is roasted cocoa beans made into powder. So this one, so that you can see, is a much paler colour. Right. Brilliant. So you put the bowl on top of the scales to get all the weighing right then? I just want to make sure we're adding about the right amount of everything. Okay. And it's hard usually weighing a, um, a liquid. Right. So this okay, is what we're going to do. Okay. So I'm just going to weigh out 200 grams of this cocoa butter. And I've got 200 grams here of the cocoa powder ready. And what we're going to do is just whisk the two together and we're going to add the salted caramel oh. for the flavour. Oh. Wow. Right, here's the salted caramel I just made. I'm going to put a couple of big spoons in, into the chocolate mix. And this will give it the most divine flavour. I might actually put three in, because I know you love it. I do. <laughs> you can always add more later. It's always just be a little bit careful of adding too much of anything. So here we are, here's the chocolate all whisked together over the bain-marie and it's beautiful and liquid. The only thing I would say is do not let it heat above 45 degrees or 50 degrees because then it's not really raw chocolate and also it's going to take a lot longer to set. So just want it hot enough so that you can whisk it and then use it. I'm going to add a little bit more salted caramel, I just think it needs a touch more. There we go, just whisk that together and then have a little taste. It's not really hot now because this chocolate's fairly cool compared to the caramel. Can I have a go? Mmm. Okay, here we go. Oh, it's totally up to you how much caramel you want to add. Mmm. Mmm, beautiful. I'm going to add some more. Go on then, you mm. okay. go for it, girl. She's just popped out and I've been dying to do this the whole time. Get a banana in the caramel. Oh! Oh, so now we're going to make some bars of chocolate. Oh, um, I am so, so excited about this. And Holly said that I can use whatever I want inside them. Now, my favourite actually is um, I love nut and raisins. So we add the caramel as well to the chocolate. So we're going to do one big bar of nut and raisin. And we've actually um, using almonds and we've roasted those first as well to give it an extra taste. So here I've laid some baking parchment paper in a ceramic dish to get a nice square shape. I'm going to pour my chocolate in, which I've just made with my raw cacao mm. and my salted caramel. It can be quite thin, you don't want a really thick bar that you can't get your teeth into. So there we are, there's the chocolate. Let that spread around, swish it around like this. You don't this. need that much then, do you? No, a little goes a long way, especially with raw chocolate because right. it's very intense. It's very rich, isn't it? So there we are. Then, Get your toasted almonds and just throw them all in and then get your beautiful raisins. Do you make it really thick with almonds and raisins? Lots and lots, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like a little girl. There we so go. Excited. It's nicely covered in beautiful fruit and nut. There we are. Oh. That goes in the fridge probably for about half an hour. You can put it in the freezer if you like to, okay. to speed it up. All right, let's do that. Let's do it. Okay. Here we are, the fruit and nut are inside, and now you just want to put that in the fridge for at least half an hour to set. And my most favourite rule is oh, nut and raisin bar. <laughs> oh my god. It's beautiful. What do you think? Mm. It's just melting in my mouth. And absolutely gorgeous. So it's goodbye from Holly, and I thought we'd bring sheeps in on the act, sheeps, and uh, goodbye from me.